Tenchu, Shadow Assassins. This appears to be part of a franchise, and I don't know anything about that franchise, so I can't draw any comparisons. In feudal Japan, in the kingdom of Lord Gota, the Big Cheese, it has been a year since whatever happened in the last game. It has been a year of peace. Now I know what you're thinking. Peace never lasts in stories like this. Well, actually, in this case, it doesn't. The princess is captured, and the two ninjas, Rikimaru, the Latin pop sensation, and Ayame are sent to try to get her back. Ayame is the aggressive of the two, so she, without thinking about it, just rushes out to get Princess Kiku, mainly because it's the only way the writers could make the fairly simple and yet somehow quite convoluted plot work. Rikimaru is evidently the more level-headed of the two. For example, he knows that good armor lets your abs breathe. However, he also doesn't cover up his really eye-catchingly white hairs. I don't know what the deal is with that. So anyway, he's told to investigate who it is by the right-hand man of Lord Gota, who certainly isn't the bad guy at all, even though he constantly turns off to the side and snickers menacingly. The right-hand man, not Lord Gota. None of the twists in the plot really come as any surprise at all. In fact, at points, it seems like they aren't even trying to convince you. This is a stealth game, sort of like Splinter Cell, and to a lesser extent, something like the Hitman franchise, Commandos. The one it's definitely most similar to is Splinter Cell. Every section of the ten missions has you sneaking from the start of that section to the end of that section. Occasionally there is a boss battle, I'll get into that more later. The main difference between this and something like Splinter Cell, however, is how incredibly limited it is. Both have these very linear levels, but where Splinter Cell gives you a set of tools and you get to decide what to use against that specific enemy or group of enemies, this one often has only one solution to each task. So you're basically just trying out stuff until you hit on the right thing, or sometimes honestly trying to bypass that task if you can. This is a crushingly monotonous game. There is far too little variation. Part of it is that the levels keep being revisited. Like, you'll go to the same area two or three times, and sometimes it barely changes, like your goal might be the exact same thing. And it's not like they do something clever with it either. I mean, over the course of this, you will play as both Rikimaru and Ayame at different points. But there's never this sense of, oh, the reason this was like that when I got there as character one was because character two had already been there and caused it. That makes sense. Instead, it just feels lazy and maybe rushed. I mean, I don't really know the history of this game, but I could imagine that they really didn't have enough time to put out something of actual quality. So while it isn't incomplete, basically what they did was make some average to good stuff and then duplicate it. The replayability lies entirely in improving your stats, and I honestly can't imagine I'll be going back to this game for that. By the time it was over, I was just glad to be rid of it. The only reason I did complete it was so I could give a completely honest review. Credit where credit is due, they do get some things entirely right in this. For as much of the game as you can, you'll be sneaking around, lurking in the shadows. So yes, another similarity to Splinter Cell, you hide in darkness. You can be standing outside, a guard can be walking straight past you, and if you're in the darkness, you at least may not be spotted. In Splinter Cell, you won't be spotted. In this, it's a little bit more iffy. But where in Hitman you might be hiding behind a door or in a closet, no jokes about the sexual orientation of 47. This mostly has you in the same general area as your target. And you'll be in shadows. You know how old houses might have a section in front that's like slightly raised above the ground? You can crawl under one of those, and then you can crawl around in there, 
if an enemy gets close enough, you can kill them. You can also hide inside a large, conveniently placed, and fortunately enough, empty jar. They blend in with the environment about as well as the man-sized boxes in Hitman Blood Money. And one of the most common hiding places is <clears throat> a shrubbery. Unlike Splinter Cell and Hitman, and every other stealth game I've ever played, this one will not allow you to kill someone who knows that you're in the general area. If they're alerted to your presence, they'll be moving around trying to find you, and even if they're within your reach, you cannot kill them. I have a feeling the game developers would excuse this with Ninja Honor, but I think a lot of people confuse the samurai with the ninja. Samurai have honor. Ninja were these Chinese political assassins, okay? There's not an awful lot of honor there. They're lackeys, okay? They're just good at what they do, or were. I mean, it's not like they exist anymore, right? When you do hide, or when you're trying to hide a body, areas that provide enough shadow for you to cover in tend to have a sort of highlight Maybe like a negative highlight, if you can imagine that. The area will have like a sort of gray mist. And once you enter that, your body, and if you're carrying a dead body, that body, everybody, will be covered in this sort of organic black blackness. Think like Venom from Spider-Man. It's nicely stylized, and it always lets you know if you are hiding a body so that it cannot be found. At least I've never had a body in this game be found when it was enveloped by the darkness like that. Maybe this is a good time to talk graphics. They're pretty good. They're good considering the game is for the Wii, at least. But they aren't the best looking I've seen on the console. The stylization is pretty nice. If you cut the throat of someone, the blood will kind of splurt out very dramatically and not messy, you know, sophist you know, in a sophisticated manner almost. The camera work on the stealth kills or hisatsu tends to be nice, but in certain situations there isn't quite room for the camera in that location or something and it winds up looking kinda bad. Animations are pretty good. The eyes are fairly well done, fairly expressive. Fire is downright ugly, though, and lighting still is something that the Wii can't do all that well. Back to the stealth kills. Basically, you get close enough to an enemy, and usually you can just walk out from your hiding place as soon as their back is turned, as long as no one else is looking at you. Oh, and I like to interject, the sense ability, or whatever it's called, is pretty nice and something that I would like to see in more stealth games because it allows you to see the sight lines of enemies like in commandos and you generally don't have that in these third person not bird's eye view camera stealth games anyway as long as you get close enough to them even if you aren't currently in the darkness you can do it unless you're up against one of the armored guards all of whom have superhuman hearing. I'm not kidding, you can be walking 10 steps behind them and they'll still hear you. They'll even hear you if you are in the darkness. They just won't see you unless they get close enough. So you cannot sneak up on them. With them you have to be hiding and have them pass. Either that or just sneak past and avoid them entirely. Anyway, once you do get close enough Press the A button and you'll initiate the kill. Then you have to do a movement with either the nunchuck or the Wiimote. You'll be told what motion to do, but some of them really don't register well. Try to do the one that just has you whipping either the nunchuck or the Wiimote downwards. That one tends to work. And in the most open of these situations, you get to choose how to kill this particular enemy, although I never really figured out how it does it 